Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video. And this one is about a new car in the collection. And it is not the Ferrari F40 that lots of you have spotted on previous videos. And I, when I get to editing, I think, oh, I never mentioned the F40. I want to clear up the F40 before we go anywhere. This belongs to a good friend of mine and he was moving house and needed somewhere to put the Ferrari F40. And I said, well, put it in the store, it'd be fine. But yeah, he's very happy for me to do a test on it. I haven't done uh, a review of it because it's, he actually fitted straight through pipes at the back. There is no silencer whatsoever on this F40 and it's extremely loud. He tried to fit another exhaust system on it so it was a bit more bearable in the cabin, but it didn't fit. So it's a winter project. At some point in the spring, I might well do a review on it. But the new car in the collection is part of this 80s sort of supercar era. Uh, it's, it's one of, it is my favourite era. When I was growing up, these were the hero cars, the poster cars, the Testarossa, the Countach. I had that Lotus Esprit 1987 as well. And it was a very exciting time. F40 sort of capped it all when that arrived. And to me, the uh, McLaren F1 just eclipsed everything. And then supercars went on a different place. You know, we call them hypercars. They almost got too quick. But back in the 80s, it, these were the aspirational cars, the Countach, Tesserossa, etc. And I've really enjoyed, you know, as time goes on, the more I enjoy the Countach and the Tesserossa. We've had some great journeys in this car. One of the cars I did have in the collection from the 80s supercars was that Porsche 930, 911 Turbo, 1989, G50 gearbox, etc. And what I found, it was a beautiful example, low mileage example, it was a blue car, but when I had it side by side by the Countach and Testarossa, you'd always dash for one of the keys for those rather than the Porsche. It wasn't quite as exciting as I hoped and you know, imagined it might be. I then swapped that um, 913, we had that GT2 replica type of the 993 Turbo. And while that was very exciting, it, it was too harsh for me on road. It wrecked its gearbox. And after taking all the weight out, I was a bit disappointed that it was still 1400 kilos. But that turbo, 930 turbo era, I just loved the car. I always have loved the 911 turbo. And that era of turbo was just iconic. You couldn't believe this. It was a sort of the first sports car they bolted a turbo to, and it had this, you know, Widowmaker reputation. It was the king of turbo, and 80s was all about Sierra Cosworth, the Spree Turbo, etc., and 911 Turbo. And the ultimate 911 Turbo of the era, I suppose, with the slant nose, the flap ball, um, this one with the 935 nose on it. And I've looked at a few of those as well. But it almost, it's not the Hero 911. I wanted, if I was going to have a, a, a turbo, I wanted the upright lights, the iconic look, etc. And a few weeks ago, a car came under my radar and I thought, oh my goodness, that's really special. And here it is. Now, this is a 930 Turbo S. And I, if you haven't heard of a Turbo S, well, neither had I. But in 1989, Porsche Special Wishes Division made 21 Turbo S cars. And they're recognisable by the additional oil cooler down there. So if you look at a, a, a slant nose, flat nose, you see that has also an oil cooler there. And it needs that because this gets an uprated engine, uprated suspension, and it's extremely special. Tell you what I'm going to do, before we go any further, I'm going to get it out and then I'll give you a closer look. Now, first thing to say about this 930, it didn't leave the factory with roof wheels. We'll get to those in a moment, but they've been an add-on some time between 1989 and today. But this car um, left the factory August 1989. And it was from this sort of special wishes, special request department. So you used to have a, a Porsche 930 went down the regular production line and then it moved to this different division where special requests 
could be done on your very special 930. This was, um, it was called Sonderwunsch, I think. I put it in German. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it was Zuffenhausen up the road where they used to do the sort of restoration work. And they also made the slant nose 911, 930 I showed you earlier. That's where all that work was carried out. And it, it was, I think it's a bit like the Kuntas and its um, rear wing. It was sort of after the car left the line and been, you know, homologated, whatever, it then went to this other division, which could be where your car could be enhanced, sort of post-purchase, etc. And the person who originally ordered this car, I am told, was a big Porsche collector, racer, Kerry Morse and he uh, resides in California. And I suppose if you do a Google on him, the most famous cars he seemed to own, he had a couple of Porsche uh, 935s in period and raced and was very much involved in the endurance racing scene and he just loved his 935. Including in 1988, he actually purchased what we sort of christen Moby Dick, the uh, pretty famous Chassis 007 Porsche 935 with those very famous martini stripes, etc. And he also had Chassis 004 as well. So a real player in Porsche and obviously very well known to Porsche because he purchased a whole load of spares, etc. from them for 935. So he was the original owner who commissioned this car. And I think it's just spectacular that it's it's a Turbo S. Now, I'll explain what Turbo S is. I think if you, again, if you go onto Google and say 930 Turbo S, the first one that comes up was the French importer Sonauto in 1989 commissioned 10 special final line uh, turbos and they were Turbo S. They were labelled Turbo S for the French market. And they were about 40% more than a regular 930 turbo. Um, this, this car was actually more expensive than the Countach and the Testarossa in actual fact. Testarossa was, I think, about 76,000 this period, 86 for a um, Testarossa. This was a hundred and something, 110, 120,000, that sort of price. And it was just a statement because they believed a lot of collectors, especially in America, thought they, Porsche were never going to do another 911 turbo. 928 was going to take off. There wasn't, they, they, dealers thought there wasn't going to be another one. It all went a bit wrong because in Geneva 1990, Porsche showed the 964 turbo on the motor show stand. But when this car was ordered, there was this belief this would be the final turbo. And you can sort of recognise it at Turbo S, the black surround around the headlight is a bit of a giveaway, and obviously this front oil cooler. And you needed that front oil cooler because the engine has been enhanced. There was a, a performance pack that went on a lot of the slant nose, a 330 horsepower power lift from 300 as standard. And they did that. It was quite a comprehensive sort of change to the engine. This car has a K27 turbo, a bigger intercooler. And when we get round the back, there's four outlet exhausts as well. So they're the main giveaways. But to get that engine enhancements, you had to, Porsche uh, required that you put the, this different front air dam on it and the front oil cooler. Also with the Turbo S, this car is lower at the front, 38 mil low at the front and uh, 27 mil low at the rear. They talk about the wider track by 35 mil with sp spaces added. I, I'm not sure if there is a space there. Could actually be, yeah, I think there is a space there. So yeah, wider tracked as well, just to fill that arch. I am confused by these roof wheels. And this is sort of where I want some help on this car, because I've got to do a bit of investigative work on it. This feels a bit fake or fortune, really. I do not have paperwork for its early history. Um, so if I just, I did a, uh, a check on what it had done via Carfax in America. Um, so it was, I think the first owner, Kerry Morse, owned it to around 1999. It seems to have a title um, update in that date. And he was using it. It had done 36,000, 37,000 miles by then. Um, it went to another owner. The only oddity is in 2012, the vehicle was reported stolen, um, but it was found almost immediately. Um, and then 
in, yeah, it was a mileage of 2,460 in 2012, which I think is 102,000 miles from what we can see. And then the car was moved to Germany and went to Freisinger Motorsport, who Kerry Morse also had dealings with and restored Moby Dick and some, um, that 935. And they did a full restoration on this car and it is absolutely pin. It is showing 1,090 kilometres since rebuild, and it is new. And it's just bizarre to have a 930 that's basically new underneath, on top, engine rebuilt, etc. If I have a slight grumble, uh, the whole interior has been retrimmed as well. Um, you can also, with a, a Turbo S, you get that central console as well which is an added extra on the personalization and then you can recognize the french turbo s's because they got 959 seats with a strange trim in the middle here which was what was replicated what was on a 959 these could well be 959 seats anyway because they're they're the very bolsters as you can see they but because they've been retrimmed they might have lost that 959 distinctive look Actually, it's worth me just taking you around a few more details. You obviously get this big air intake at the side wing, rather than the shark fin sort of um, stone protection on the Turbo S, they opened it up. Not all Turbo S have that. That's a special request program added those. Um, and then you come around, Turbo S all seem to have no rear wiper. That is a delete. I presume it's for lightness or something. I don't know. And interestingly, the reason you can never spot a Turbo S out in the wild, they always debadge them. So there's never a badge on the back. And now if I just flick the engine lid, so we can have a look in there. As ever, not the best looking engine at all. Um, the thing that is actually different, that is a much deeper intercooler. That's a much larger intercooler on this car. And it means everything is slightly shifted this way. This, this sort of valve here is all different. But the key difference, I suppose, is the, the four outlets on the exhaust. And weirdly, when it's running, all happens at this exhaust. This side is actually connected to the wastegate. It's not actually functional as a normal exhaust. The engine doesn't breathe through both uh, sides. So there we go. Now there's a, a quick rundown, but I've always wanted a 930, a Porsche Turbo, that stood toe to toe with the Countach and Testarossa in performance terms, in desirability and drivability. And uh, I think the best thing to do now, take this outside and I'll give you a little tour of the interior and then take it for a quick drive. <laughs> oh, very typical 930 era turbo in here, 911. Um, and that clunk of a door is so recognisable, isn't it? That just sort of vault-like quality to it. And everything's close to you in, a, in a, this age of 1989, 9-11. So non-adjustable wheel, um, traditional sort of four-spoke with a horn push in the middle. And of course, the central the rev counter and the boost gauge in the middle. And I'm staring at uh, 1,096 kilometres, this car, which is crazy, isn't it? I mean, it is like stepping into a new 930 and it's 32 years old because it, I mean, it has the, it, the smell. I mean, I mean, it's, I presume new carpets as well as retrimmed, but it has that smell of a new car. And it's, yes, quite bizarre. Typical, yeah, that air cooled sound as well, and the randomness of the uh, dials, etc. You know, the uh, well, it's funny, it's still got the wiper on it. I suppose it left the production line with a rear wiper, but the, the sunroof hidden away, just a little switch down here. There it goes. You'd never guess where it is. You need to, you need to have intimate knowledge to adjust the mirrors. I've got this little toggle here, but how do I swap between left and right? Oh, of course, under the um, temperature and oil pressure gauge, another little rocker switch, and that switches left to right there. And then the pull button for the lights, etc. 
so yeah and this being a g50 a 1989 930 i have the five speed gearbox with a close throw lever on it as well and then this distinct um special request central console now the french ones actually have their number um one to ten plate here to say that it is a turbo s this one being a bespoke made for an individual customer does not have that plate but i've got an outside temperature gauge telling me it's 45 degrees outside i thought it might be a bit cooler than that and then the air conditioning controls and hazards and rear heated screen so just yeah different that's about the only thing you can sort of see different in here for a, this turbo s version um, super efficient heater but there is a yeah I, there's such a mechanical feel to this age of 911 so i'm just going to nip out i can't do my normal circuit today unfortunately because they've been out sorting the roads and looking at the condition of this car underneath i'm not taking it out in salty conditions so i'm going to just nip down some lanes i know have not been salted just to give you a flavor of what this car's all about after days of rain the sun has come out and uh, it's almost too much sun but uh, it's very pretty outside and the roads are just sort of drying out but I know there's no salt being applied on this particular bit of road and the heater is ridiculous the air-cooled 911s of course the heating came off the exhaust so it's a sort of heat exchanger on the exhaust it's enclosed and it blows it into the cabin and you just roast in seconds as you get that exhaust um, yeah, heat in the cabin so instantly too hot in here but um, yeah tight it's no power steering of course in this age of car and you just feel things the rim is wriggling in my hand which i just love i love the steering on the testarossa as well it's uh, it's just something about this age of car really nice and weirdly when you think about the engine mods you know we've got a bigger turbo on this more aggressive more racy sort of cam timing and all those sort of things tend to make it a bit baggier at the bottom end and move the horsepower higher up the rev range i'm not feeling that i mean yes there's turbo lag there but you've got to remember it's a 3.3 litre engine um, lowish compression but this is a light car a 930 turbo is only around 1350 kilos so considerably light this easily the lightest turbo well obviously 964 will put on about a hundred kilos and the time you got to 993 turbo well that was about 200 kilos heavier because it had the uh, four-wheel drive twin turbo just a different sort of car but already yes that the performance potential of this turbo s is making itself known when the turbo starts spinning that boost builds very quickly and uh, yes you suddenly realize oh i'm in a very different sort of 930. oh yes that was only 4000 rpm and uh, yes <laughs> it's a quick car it is a very exciting car even though i'm just warming it up at the moment temperature now might just get a clear run down here just to give it a bit of exercise I don't know still quite greasy underneath but um, yeah the way it boosts up is quite something and there we go yeah you're quickly through the gears in this car I say I don't want to overload the engine with just 700 miles recorded but just that boost full one just I just felt the wheels just go there that's how it's about six degrees out there and just in the shade there was a bit of dampness and uh, yeah I, I just so chuffed to have found this car here we go now it's tri road there we go and full boost and away you go whoa solid brake pedal I hope you understand why I'm so excited 
to have managed to add this car to the collection and to discover that there was an ultimate version of 930 that I never knew existed, the Turbo S of 1989, 21 cars built. My dilemma is I don't have a paper trail definitive history to say this is definitely one of those cars. All I have is a very informed previous buyer also a Porsche collector in the UK um, who knows um, Friesen the most sport very well and knows um, Kerry Moore so I have a, a verbal confirmation that this is the true history of this car but I have contacted Porsche um, direct in Germany um, good friends in America are trying to get hold of Kerry Morse at the moment and I've also contacted um, Tuttle Porsche as well to see if they can help sort of confirm this car. I love cars with history and uh, this car has the potential to have the most wonderful history file but it's not there at the moment and if you know of anything about this car, got any period shots of it hanging around the IMSA paddock, there's a lovely original period sticker in the back window IMSA which is the American Durance Racing series um, I would love for you to get in touch, put it in the comments below, but uh, wouldn't it just, over the next few months, I just want to build up the history file on this, what I think is a very special Porsche, and one that I think will sit in the collection for some time to come. So there you go, I hope you've enjoyed this video, slightly different video, but looking at um, the latest car to uh, add it to my collection, if you have enjoyed it, well please keep watching, keep subscribing, more videos coming on very soon.